Ladies and gentlemen, this is internet personality Ryder Vangelis here with a review of the Popinika Deluxe Ride Shooter from the Rider and Monster R&M series that came out way back in Aught 2 for Kamen Rider Ryuki. This is a really, really awesome toy and unfortunately one of the last of its kind to my knowledge. I don't believe the Popinika Rider Machine series is, is really lasted all that long. I think some of the last ones were for Blade. Don't hold me to that, though. If someone can tell me that they continued on with these kind of things, I'd love to hear it. The Kabuto ones, I'm not sure if those were sized for the Sochok Henshins, but I heard that they work okay. This is one of the only ones I have, though, and it's really one of the most impressive ones I've seen given pictures on the web. I wanted to show you the box just because it's big, solid, Popinika thick cardboard. It feels like it contains something awesome, and it does. The instructions are more or less on the back. Step one, push button. Step two, canopy open. And step three, seat up. This is a very simple toy to operate. You don't have to uh, learn any kind of uh, metaphysics or anything like that. But this also comes with two advent cards, which are unfortunately fairly useless unless you have one certain toy. Anyway, let's pop this bad boy open. By the way, the toy comes with a couple other little perks. You get two advent cards for Kamen Rider Ryuki and the Ride Shooter. Unfortunately, you can't actually use these anywhere unless you have one certain roleplay toy. You also get a brochure, which looks kind of like a giant advent card, in which you can see all kinds of lovely toys that are no longer available in stores and various things. Look, it's a costume. I know someone out there is going to buy that. Someone's going to buy that and they're going to make a video where they show how heroic they are as a rider. I'm talking to you, Andy. I'm talking to you. The DX Ride Shooter is big, hefty, and a humongous plank of metal with a bike toy on top. It's got really excellent detail and is uh, very close to the show, even though these things didn't really appear all that often, so any discrepancies one can really let go given the nature of... Uh, how often a kid would probably be playing with this, but it's still a very cool toy, and like I said, big, clunky, and heavy in every good way. It has one major action feature, which is that you press this button. In theory, this canopy rises up and hits this button, which raises the seat up. Now, in the show, this happened in a very slow, nearly hydraulic manner, highly dramatic and incredibly badass in revealing the rider within. However, the toy does it a little bit differently in that it catapults the rider across the room, especially if you're using one of the R&M toys who are solid plastic. These seatbelt pieces are supposed to peg into the side of the rider's belt, however, they're not only soft plastic and thus not a very secure connection, they barely even peg into the seat. So this is really the, the toy's major downfall, are these useless seatbelts, which are mostly just there uh, because they're in the show. That's really the only point to them. However, it's a fun action feature because, I mean... Loading it is just so satisfying. Um, one other detail worth noting is there's a neat little cockpit sticker over here, which uh, shows you, you know, information that you're going to need to know if you're going to invade the mirror world and take part in the game. By the way, this is also the mechanism down here that uh, operates the neat little action feature. It does have a hydraulic kind of peg, which is cool, and a, an enormous spring down there, so that's, uh, that's the gist of it. And the button back here just releases this little little black thing. Now, I know that this isn't all that impressive by itself, but you got to give it props for construction. Uh, also, this really cool textured look on the red seat. Uh, it's sculpted in there, but it's really helped out by the paint apps. And the vac metal chrome doesn't chip, so many props to Bandai. Now, I bet we all want to know what this looks like with someone inside. I do have the R&M Ryuki, however, I also have the Sochuk Henshin Ryuki, who has metal armor, is a little bit heavier, and overall just works out better with this toy. Not to mention, diecast plus diecast equals victory. So let's take a look at that. Now that is more like it. With a rider inside, the toy is very truly complete. By the way, it rolls really, really solidly, uh, in part thanks to the wheels, which are not soft rubber, but some kind of incredibly hard rubber-like substance. By the way, the action feature... Okay, let's do it. <laughs> See? He stayed inside. An R&M figure 
would have gone not just here, an R&M figure would have gone cartwheeling over the handlebars, at least in my experience. So, if you're going to pick up this toy, I'd say try to get a hold of a Sochog Henshin figure. Although, the only downside to these guys is, as I said, these seat belts don't even plug into their belts. But, uh, really, they, they barely do anything for the <laughs> R&M figures in the first place, so it's no big loss. Um, overall, I've got to say, this toy is really worth it, but unfortunately, I don't know how easy it is to get a hold of anymore. I bought mine many years ago from a local hobby shop for a very, very good price. And unfortunately, I've never seen it for that price again. I think it's online now and then, and I'd say if you're going to pick one up, don't go over 50 or 60 for it if you can avoid it. That said, it is a big, heavy toy, and it's really awesome. So if you're going to overspend on something, this is something that's kind of worth overspending on, especially if you have Ryuki figures already. It really completes a display. And I'd say that if you're a fan of Dragon Knight as well, this is a pretty cool toy to find because Bandai of America, you know, they try hard, but they tend to not put out quite as polished a product, whereas Bandai of Japan can aim their stuff at collectors simultaneously due to the demographics over there. So Dragon Knight fans and Ryuki fans alike, try to find this thing. It's cool. I know that you're all going to wonder what I think of Dragon Knight, since I'm a fairly big Kamen Rider fan. All I'm going to say is I enjoy it, but I won't recommend it to anyone. It's really a show that you've got to check out by yourself and see whether or not you can deal with it. I think it's fine, but uh, I'm not going to go around telling people they must be watching it. Although, Mark Dacascus. Anyway, this has been Internet Personality Vangelis. I hope you enjoyed this review. I hope you enjoyed this little peek at a apparently somewhat rare Popanika toy and somewhat rare Rider toy. And I hope that those of you who are after it can find it, because it's really worth it. Anyway, I'll talk to you again later. Stay true, Rider fans, because only the strong will survive. It's coming.